G'day there guys, Pokemon Go's number one cheater here, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy today's bloody good stories because there's some controversial ones out there, all the time, every day. Reddit. Posted by user CarbonCopy404, titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend he's a bad person? So recently, my boyfriend got some dental trays for his teeth done, the moulds of your teeth, which can be used to put product in to whiten your teeth. He's done this before but lost his last set of trays, so went somewhere new to get the new trays done. My boyfriend told me that when going to pick up his dental trays, the receptionist just gave him the trays without asking for the payment of them. He then took the trays and left, knowing he had not paid for them. The receptionist called shortly after he left and explained that a mistake was made and could he please either come back and pay for the trays or pay over the phone. My boyfriend lied, saying he was adamant that he had already paid before picking the trays up and it wasn't his fault that they had no record of him paying and that he didn't keep his receipt to prove it to them. He was pretty vocal to me about not wanting to pay for the dental trays if he didn't have to, and that it was the receptionist's mistake and on her. What sparked our argument about this was a car journey where he answered the phone to the manager of the dental practice, who was following up the call with the receptionist. My boyfriend continued with his lie that he had already paid, and it was not his problem, that they could not provide proof of this. Now, something about witnessing him lie so easily to this man really bothered me, and it bothered me that he didn't care if the receptionist may get into serious trouble or even lose her job over this mistake, or that he wasn't losing out by paying as he would have paid for the product in normal circumstances. After the call, which didn't reach any resolution, I told him that was very uncomfortable for me to hear and witness. And he's a bad person for lying like that when he knows full well it was likely an honest mistake by the receptionist and he got a product he didn't pay for. My boyfriend's now giving me the silent treatment and seems really hurt that I called him a bad person. He says most people would avoid paying for something if they didn't have to. Am I the a-hole? Should I apologize? Warning, warning, liar detected in the room, the imposter needs to be ejected ASAP. OP, if your gut is telling you one thing, and your brain is also telling you the same thing, why would you believe the mouth noises your boyfriend is making when he's demonstrated full well he won't pay for something like this if he doesn't have to? Yes, I may be a little dramatic with my words here, and to some this may not be a huge problem. But unless he doesn't immediately recognize he's on the wrong side of history here, genuinely apologize to you, and them, and fix the situation, then I have no sympathy for this man. He decided to react like a child by giving you the silent treatment and say, Oh, woe is me! I'm so hard from you calling out my, my morally bad actions! Why would you hurt me like this? Oh, oh, oh. Cue the <laughs> Cut the waterworks, mate. No one's falling for it. The ball's in your court here as to how you approach your relationship from here, OP, but morally and ethically speaking, I'm judging you as not the a-hole. There's no way you should apologize for saying what you said. In the comments, Zwerg Schnauzer says, Not the a-hole in the least. Huge red flag here. What your boyfriend did is outright stealing. He is also stupid. This is the 21st century. The dentist knows he didn't pay, and the police will know that too when the dentist presses charges. OP replies, Thank you. It's good to see most people wouldn't do this. This isn't the first red flag of this nature, but this one really stuck out to me. I'm going to seriously reconsider our future. We had plans to travel, get engaged, etc., as it's clear our core values don't match, and I'm almost certain he could just as easily lie in this manner to me. Girl, run. What if he decides to steal from you, your family, or your friends? Liars will lie just to keep up the practice. Not the a-hole. You called him a bad person because he is. 
Dental equipment is expensive, so that dental tray was in the hundreds, if not in the thousands. He lied and knows that the receptionist could be fired over his lie and doesn't care. This sets up a disturbing pattern. Dump him as fast as you can. And call the dentist, tell the truth and save her job. OP says, I think I'm going to, I'll post an edit update soon. And Rogue Gambit says, not the a-hole, he's a thief and a liar. And now he's resorting to emotional abuse and playing the victim to continue his delusion of entitlement. And now on to the update. Update, thanks for the rewards. A lot has happened since my original post. I spoke to the manager of the dental practice. I explained that my boyfriend, BF, had been open to me about not paying and that he doesn't plan to. The manager said a letter was already on the way demanding the payment and if boyfriend fails to pay, then court proceedings will begin. He was thankful I called and knew it was their mistake, but was surprised by my boyfriend's attempts to argue with him. That's a good result for now. I didn't plan on telling my boyfriend, as I wanted to end it. There's been too many red flags, so I decided I couldn't ever truly trust him, and I didn't want to add fuel to the fire. But before I got to end our relationship in person, I learnt another painful lesson. Recently, my boyfriend's laptop broke. This was fine, as it was old and he can't work from home anyway, as he sells cars, so he used mine. Earlier this week, I'm on my laptop working and go to check my personal emails. Except my boyfriend's email was still logged in when I opened the webpage. I got to log out, but saw the most recent 30-ish emails were all from the same person. A girl. This was weird, as who emails like that to converse anymore? I know it was an invasion of privacy, but I clicked onto the emails. I deduced this was a girl from his work. They were emailing because her mobile phone was broken, and emailing him from her work email during the day was an easy way for them to still talk. The emails were flirtatious. They mentioned dates they'd been on. He'd clearly been to her house, they spent lunch breaks together, and she thought he was single. The more I read, the more enraged I became. What if I'd never clicked the email? After considering where I could bury him, I decided to remain calm. I called my manager to tell her what I had just learned. She's super cool and said to take the afternoon. I then called an emergency locksmith and packed up my boyfriend's stuff. He alternates between staying at mine and his mum's, except for his PS5 that I bought for his 25th birthday last month. When this purge of my boyfriend from my life was ready, I text him, I know about S. Our relationship is over, your things are on the doorstep. You must transfer me the money for XYZ, and please don't ever contact me again. And I blocked him on everything. 20 minutes later, a barrage of knocks are at my door as he's pleading to be let in to talk about it. I can see him, but stay silent where he can't see me. He was on his knees, crying, begging, pleading for me not to leave him. Whether they were crocodile tears or not, my heart ached. After some time, he left with his stuff. I felt relief and had a good cry, but I doubt that's the last I'll hear from him. I feel heartbroken and stupid. An enormous thank you to all those who said his behaviour was revealing of his character and what he's capable of. I will apply the same vigilance to future partners. I know this is a dodged bullet, but it hurts like hell. Edit, just wanted to clarify some things. I kicked him out of my house. I own it, he's never paid anything towards it, and has no documentation linking him to my house. He alternates between staying at mine and his mother's, with his mother's being his official and primary residency. Weirdly, some of you are really focused on the fact that I kept the PS5, but I paid for it, have the receipts, and it never left my home. I feel like retracting this gift he's had a little over a week as an a-hole tax is morally justified after he's been a five-star a-hole. I think they'd be very different comments if this was the other way around, and he'd just given me an engagement ring and then found out I was cheating not even two weeks later. Yeah, 
It'd be mine under the jurisdiction of a gift, but is it morally right to keep the ring? Probably not. I get the sense that half of the comments come from the fact that the console is a hard find at the moment, but I just pre-ordered it like everyone else who got one. Some are interested in whether I'm selling it. I'm undecided, because on top of everything, my ex owes me a sizable amount of money. So it depends on whether he decides to be an a-hole with a cherry on top, and not pay me back. I noted the email of the girl my ex was cheating with, in case I wanted to contact her directly. I was thinking of constructing a message explaining everything, and assuring her I'm not bitter towards her. Then it's up to her what she wants to do with that info. Thanks so much for all the supportive messages and comments. I am reading every single one. I'm honestly shocked at the amount of kindness from strangers. In the comments, Lumos Fiat Lux says, Good for you, girl. He revealed his true colours and you respected yourself enough to believe them. You've had a rough week and it must have been tough, but you should be proud of yourself for how you handled it. Hope it's all uphill from here. He's going to bitterly regret being a cheating, stealing jerk, and you're going to have a beautiful life without him. Sending hugs and best wishes. The ironic thing is that had he not given her serious cause to doubt his character with the tray incident, she might have let his crying and pleading persuade her to forgive the cheating somehow. Cheating is a hard thing to process, and too often the innocent party feels as if they must have done something wrong, because otherwise this good person wouldn't have cheated, right? But Opie's eyes had already been opened. Yes, it does hurt like hell. Think of it as surgery to remove a tumour from your life. The incision hurts, but it will heal. That's a great way to look at it. As someone who's had a brain tumour, I can say that this analogy can be taken a step further. In some cases, like mine, the tumour is in such a difficult area that going in and doing surgery to remove it isn't enough. Remnants of the tumour remain and continue to grow and cause problems in your life. Sometimes, after the surgery, you have to go and do a few rounds of chemo. And if that doesn't work, radiation. Chemo was definitely worse for me. But you gotta stay strong. Yeah, chemo's gonna make you feel like you're dying, but you have to remember that it's also saving your life. Radiation might make you lose your hair, but it's keeping this thing from ruining your life. So keep at it. Depending on the type of tumour and where it's at, one surgery can take care of it, or you might be in the long haul. Regardless, it's infinitely better than living with a tumour. Ending a relationship is never easy, and the fact that you didn't murder him is commendable. I certainly would have. I hope that your healing process is swift and that you find a more suitable love in the future. Also, I hate to be the person who brought this up, but if you were sexually active with him and he was cheating, be sure to get yourself tested for STIs just in case. Thank you for your concern. I did think I should go for a test. I'm not sure whether to tell the girl the truth as well, but I really don't want to know the gory details from her. I would tell her. If she thinks that he's single, then she deserves to know what an a-hole he is. Then you should go get tested, and she should too. Who knows what else and who else he's been up to. This is true. She doesn't deserve it either. I'll construct an email letting her know and assure her I'm not mad at her as she didn't know and was probably fed a pack of lies too. I'll definitely be getting a test. Super refreshing to see someone have this mindset. Too often the other woman gets a barrage of hate when she had no idea she was involved with someone who had a partner. I definitely agree with the suggestion of getting tested. This guy has hurt you enough. You don't deserve to have any more suffering because of him, so it's best to know if there's anything else you need to take care of. Best of luck to you, and well done for getting the hell out of there and knowing your worth. Posted by user T.O.U. Titled, Am I the a-hole for not being sufficiently angry after a colleague took credit for my work? So I'm a teacher in a private languages academy. I was asked to do an online lesson plan for every age group and level, and to be used by all the teachers. 
It needed to include the plan, lessons, games, slides, tests for French and English courses, plus a training workshop for my colleagues. I was basically doing everything the teachers will use on every lesson starting November 16th, since most of them are old and there are some complaints from parents about lessons quality. Three weeks ago, one of my colleague's sons started working with us, and my boss gave him access to all my material because he is young too, he knows about these things. But he didn't help at all. You can imagine my surprise when he sent everything I did, and that was still being edited, to everyone after changing some colours and presenting it as his own. I was extremely angry and talked to my boss, but they said I was lying because I wasn't angry enough for someone whose work was stolen, and that I should be happy we would all benefit by the material he did, and that he had informed the boss that I was sabotaging him, and he requested for me to be taken out of the team. I need the money, and I can't quit, so I calmed down and asked my boss to send me the info about me leaving the team and my next tasks by email, and he did. Now I'm working part-time, I was off today, and my colleagues had their training, but boss was calling me non-stop until I answered around 10pm. Basically, the guy didn't know how to explain the plan, apps, and strategies to be used, and some colleagues noted typos in the material. I didn't finish editing and have ADHD, so there must be quite a few typos. They asked him to correct it, and the guy couldn't because he doesn't know enough English and doesn't know French at all, and told the truth after being pressured. When I answered, my boss yelled at me because there are only three days to fix everything, and he told me that I have to have everything done by Sunday midnight because it's my fault, since I should have insisted more, yelled, or something when he sent the email. The thing is, he reduced my hours, and I scheduled some tutoring hours that pay more for this weekend, and won't cancel them, so I won't help with the plan anymore because I'm not part of the team. My boss is terribly angry, and is still texting me at 2.30am, telling me how I'm effing up everyone's job, and the students will be sad because of me. And I'm sleepy, and I feel like a jerk because I know some students love the lessons, and they haven't had great lessons lately. So, am I the a-hole? That was a lot of run-on sentences written there, and my apologies if the listening in part was weird, guys. The reading part was weird for me too. But as it stands, I cannot blame you for your actions here. It's preposterous for your boss to expect dramatics when this is a professional work environment, not the set of Monty Python or something of the likes. Speaking of dead parrots, <laughs> your boss allowed your unqualified co-worker to steal your work and parade it around as his own original idea, enabled them further when you attempted to rectify the situation, and then reprimanded you for not getting on your knees and begging the boss to fix this mess. They deserve to have this project collapse tremendously beneath their feet, and you should not be expected to pick up the pieces before the collapse. You did the smart thing and filled in the gaps in employment with tutoring whilst not being fully employed, and now this boss expects you to work unpaid, I'm assuming, and crunch, crunch, crunch. No, that's ridiculous and they should be ashamed of themselves. No longer your circus, no longer your monkeys, OP, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Adopted Human says, Not the a-hole. He didn't believe you when you complained, and it doesn't seem like he tried to check if there was an issue. Go to bed, and if he keeps annoying you, tell him you didn't help because he wasn't sufficiently desperate. OP replies, I reported it and handed my resignation directly to the owner who was stuck in the US because of the pandemic and doesn't know much about the day-to-day -day activities. He was extremely apologetic, offered me another job, but I refused, and he said he'll pay me November and a half December either way. Asked me not to inform boss, we spoke because he needs to check some accounting things, but that his plan is to fire them and start Christmas vacation earlier for students. Good for you. I hope you take him up on this offer. You've earned a good job, and if he gets rid of the a-holes, you'll be in a good position to move up. This is a really good point I haven't considered. I'll think about it. 
The owner emailed me again about having another meeting next week because he wants to properly understand what's going on because apparently things are messy. So I'll ask for more info. Probably there's more problems the old boss has created that you don't know of. The second email the owner sent seems to point at that. My mom is very invested in this. She just wants to know what's happening next and after reading the email the owner sent me, She's convinced my boss must have been doing something extra. Not the a-hole. As was said previously, turn off your phone and get a good night's sleep. You didn't F anything up. He did, and he's using you as a scapegoat. In the morning, I would text him, Enough. You need to stop blaming me because you refuse to believe that I was telling the truth about my work being stolen. You even punished me for it by taking away my work hours. How dare you now try and threaten me? I've copied all of your texts and am now forwarding them to HR. Assuming you have an HR department. If not, tell him all of the above and report him to whoever is his higher up. And do so immediately before he can go running to them with lies. OP replies, Thanks. What you wrote helped me see things clearly last night. I was really tired and a bit emotional, but... What you wrote about using me as a scapegoat opened my eyes. I resigned today and feel great to be honest. Did you explain to HR and your boss's boss why you resigned? I'm sure they'd be glad to know of the incompetence and unprofessional conduct. I did. Another commenter sent a fantastic template and I adapted it, added extra info, plus attached screenshots of the messages and dozens of calls after midnight, including the one my mum revived on her phone. There's no HR because it's a newish private academy with less than 20 employees, most are part-timers, but I sent an email to the owner who's an old student of mine. He was extremely surprised and apologetic, had no idea about the parents' and employees' complaints, and didn't know what happened because he got stuck in another country since March because of the pandemic. Not the a-hole. Instead of apologizing for the accusations and reduced hours, he demands you redo everything in three days. F him. You should get a good night's sleep knowing he's screwed himself. My boss called my mum because she's my emergency contact. My poor mum was sleeping and just called my landline all worried because my effing boss called her at 3am and I wasn't answering her on my cell phone. You're right. F him. I'm going to bed. And now on to the update. Using a template user Merlin Kilgara S565 kindly sent, plus ideas other editors gave me, I redacted a formal complaint and sent it to the owner. The owner is a former student of mine and he's stuck in another country because of the pandemic. The owner called me on Zoom and was very shocked because he wasn't informed of the mother-son hiring. He didn't know of the multiple complaints from parents about the online lessons quality or that several students had stopped taking lessons and he had no idea all plans to start online courses were basically ruined. Owner emailed that he needed to check some financial aspects because the boss was his new girlfriend's brother and was supervising three different businesses and asked me to Zoom again next Wednesday, but told me he would pay me my full salary for November and half December. On Wednesday, he moved the meeting for the next Thursday, but I was busy. We emailed because he was investing and I was helping, but didn't talk until yesterday. Basically, boss hired close friends of his, the same four people, in all the places he was supervising, fired tenured employees, and was stealing money because he told clients not to pay in our currency and only use US dollars in cash. So, owner is not even sure how much he lost. The academy had to close. They lost too much money and too many students to continue. Owner said that he knows he promised to pay me in November and part of December, but that he's sorry and that's impossible now, and will only pay me 50 bucks since the business was shared with his ex-wife, and he had to pay her to avoid a bigger legal mess because it was his new brother-in-law, the one who screwed up everything. I'm jobless, but tutoring lots of former academy students and a former college told me the owner is now single and the boss is hiding. Oh wow. 
And here we were all worried about you getting credit for your work while this was going on. Thanks for the update, and boy, didn't that take a turn for the crazy. Yup. I didn't expect that, but honestly, I'm doing okay with the few kids and adults I'm tutoring. Sounds like it's time to start your own business. All these messages were very motivating, and I kind of didn't realize that I have more than enough material to just enjoy teaching for the time being. I think I'll take it slow, keep my current students, and grow through them, because I know those families and their friends are part of the small group of people that can actually pay for a tutor. I mean, I need money, and realistically, most people here cannot pay for it. G'day there guys, and that's the end of today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, and were entertained by today's bloody good content. As always, I want to do a quick shout out and a thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your beautiful faces and names will be up on screen right now. Haven't forgot about you guys, sorry I was taking a little break there. So yeah, if you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. If you want to be on this screen, there's links down to the description below where you can sign up and help support the channel and all future projects that I'm going to be doing on this one. With all that said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I'll see you in the next episode, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you.